from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2018. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to Las Vegas, everybody. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante, and I'm here with my co-host, David Floor. Good to see you again, David. VMworld day three, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We got two sets going on, 94 guests. Patrick Osborne is here. He's the Vice President of Big Data and Secondary Storage at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Patrick, great to see you again. Always a pleasure to be on theCUBE. Big quarter, uh, Antonio Neri early into his tenure, just yes. beat earnings, raised guidance, great to see that. Yep. Got to feel good. Give us the update, VMworld 2018, what's happening with you guys? Yeah, so Q3 was bang up quarter for in all segments of the business. It's great, you know, uh, obviously it's a type of uh, earnings you want to have from a, a CEO in a sort of second quarter, you know, uh, steering the ship here, and I think everyone's jazzed up. He's brought a lot of um, new life to the company in terms of, you know, technology leadership. Uh, he's someone who's, you know, certainly grown up from the grounds up, you know, starting off uh, his career at HPE. So for us who have, you know, started off as a product manager, an individual contributor, making your way up to the CEO is definitely possible. So that's been great, and um, you know, I think we're, it's favorable macroeconomics, uh, and we're taking advantage of that. VMworld's been awesome. I think this whole story around multi-cloud, and obviously we talk about hybrid IT at HPE, so it fits very well. Uh, VMware Technology Partner of the Year, again, four years running, so it's been a really good show for us. Well, you, as, as last year, data protection is like the single hottest topic. I mean, data protection, obviously cloud, the edge, but the edge is kind of new and it's yep. hot, okay, it's sexy, but in terms of actual business that's getting done, companies that are getting funded, companies getting huge raises, somebody's throwing big parties. Yep. You know, you had, we, <laughs> we, we saw you back-to-back -back nights at Omnia. I mean, it's a lot happening in data protection and HPE's got a whole new strategy around data protection. Maybe talk about that a little bit and how it's going. Yeah, so it's going really well. Like you said, that part of the market, it's, uh, it's pretty hot right now. I think there's a couple of things that are playing into that. Certainly, um, I think the, this new style of IT, like applied to secondary storage, we saw that with primary storage the last few years. Multi-cloud, the move to all flash, low latency workloads, and then certainly a lot of the things in that area are disrupting secondary storage. People want to do it different ways. They want to be able to uh, simplify this area. It's a growing area for data in general. They want to make that data work for them, right? So you test, dev, uh, workload placement, intelligent placement of, uh, of data uh, for secondary and even tertiary storage in the cloud, so a lot of good things happening there from an HBE perspective. Um, so not just backup. Yeah. No, not just backup. Right. I want Nobody more. About backup I anymore. want more out of yeah. my insurance policy. Exactly, yeah, okay. exactly. So, so something in the past that was moving from purely a TCO type of conversation, right? My, my example is always like, who likes to pay their life insurance premium, right? Because at the end of the day, I'm not going to derive any <laughs> utility from, from, that, from that payment, right? So now it's moving into more ROI. So we have things like the hybrid of flash array from Nimble, right? for example, allows you to put your, your workloads to work. We have uh, a great cloud service called HP Cloud Volumes that we use for our customers to be able to do uh, intelligent DR as a service, right, and be able to apply uh, cloud compute you know, to your data. Uh, so there's a lot of things going on in this space that's just outside of just your traditional move data from point A to point B. Now you want to make it work for you. And what about the big data portfolio? You don't, I mean, you hear a lot about data. Yep. Um, you don't hear a ton about sort of the big data, Hadoop piece of the world. And Hadoop, nobody seems to be talking about that anymore, but everybody's talking about AI, yep. machine learning, deep learning, certainly the edge is all about data. What's the big data story? So at HPE, you know, we're definitely focused on the whole edge to core analytics story, right? So we have uh, a great story, and you can saw, see in the numbers from Q3, the edge business, edge line servers, Aruba, you know, driving a lot of growth in the company, right. where, where a lot of that data is being created. And then back into the core, so for big data, we see a number of customers who are, they're using these tools to affect digital transformation. Right? They're doing it, we're doing it to ourselves. Right, So they're moving from batch oriented to now fast data, so streaming analytics, and then incorporating uh, concepts of AI and ML to provide a better service or a better experience for their customers. And we're doing that with, for example, InfoSight. Right? So we have a great product, Nimble 3PAR, and then we provide a service on top of that, which is a SaaS-based service. It has predictive analytics and machine learning, and we're able to do that by using big data analytics. 
And you you're do. offering and you're offering that as a service, as a SaaS service to yes. uh, to your customers. Absolutely, and the and the way we're able to uh, provide those predictive analytics and be able to provide those recommendations and that machine learning across an entire portfolio and be able to scale that service because it's a service, right? We've got you know tens of thousands of users using the service on a daily basis is moving from you know, an ERP system data warehouse to batch analytics to now we're doing Elasticsearch and Kafka and all these really cool techniques. So it's been, it's really helped us unlock a lot of value for our customers. So yeah, the, the, the nimble thing is, acquisition is interesting. It's bringing that sort of machine learning and, and AI to infrastructure. You've got a lot of automation in the portfolio and you can't really talk about cloud without talking about automation. So talk a little bit about automation. What do you guys? Yeah, so in, in particular, I mean, even at the show here this week, we are, you know, we're a premier technology partner with, uh, with VMware, right? And I think more that you see uh, in the VMware ecosystem is all around cloud and automation. I mean, that's really where they're going. And we've been day zero partners uh, on, on a lot of different fronts, right? So VMware Cloud Foundation integration, we do things on the storage level with VVols and SRM and all these things that allow customers to essentially program that infrastructure and get out of the mundane tasks of, of having to you know, do this manually. So for us, automation is key uh, part of our story here, especially with VM, VMware. Yeah, uh, so going a little bit further with that, what, what sort of examples, what benefit is this to your customers? How, how are they justifying putting all of this stuff in? So, you know, I think, you know, we're, it's a, it's a hybrid world, right? So our customers are going to expect uh, from us as a, as a portfolio vendor, the ability to provide an automated solution on premises as automated as what you'd get in the cloud, right? So for us, the ability to have a sourcing uh, experience that we call GreenLake, right? So you can buy everything from us from a solution perspective uh, in a you know, pay-as-you-go uh, elastic model where you can flex up, flex down, uh, and then being able to essentially provide uh, a different view depending on what persona you're coming from, right? So today, you know, obviously we've been focused for a long time on the infrastructure per persona, but now more often we're getting into the DevOps persona, the cloud engineer persona, and providing all of our all of our infrastructure, whether it's compute, networking, or storage, uh, that provides, you know, that plugs into all these uh, essentially frameworks, right? Whether it's Ansible, Chef, and all these things we do around our, our automation uh, ecosystem, it's pretty ubiquitous. Yeah, so, I mean, you're, you're touching on all the cloud bases, right, and, and you're seeing a lot of discussion around that. Mm -hmm. What are you hearing from, from customers, right? I mean, sometimes we have to squint through this. When you, a lot of the guys here, you know, we always like to say, move at the speed of the CIO, which yep. sometimes is, is slow. At the same time, they're all afraid they're going to get disrupted. Um, HPE, over the last you know, two or three years, has really brought in and partnered with some of the guys that you're talking about, whether it's containers and yep. companies that you know, do those types of, 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 of offerings. How fast are the customers actually ad adopting? Where are they adopting them? How are they handling, you talk about a hybrid world, sort of the, how are they bridging the old and the new? Yeah, so, um, you know, that's a great question. Um, for a lot of our customers, it's always a brownfield yeah, right. conversation, right? So, um, you know, you, you do have these mission critical workloads that have to run, right? So there's no, there's no edge to core without you know, your core ERP system, right? Your core Oracle system, you know, or for smaller customers that are running their businesses on SQL and you know, other things. But what we're seeing is that by, by shoring up that core and we provide you know, a set of services and products that you know, we feel are best in the industry for that and then being able to allow them to provide essentially adjacent services on top of it. It's, ex it's exactly like the same example that we had with InfoSight, right? Where those systems used to call home, right now we're taking that data, we're providing a whole ancillary set of services and functions around it and our customers are doing that. We have you know, enormous customers like British Telecom, folks like Wayfair, for example, they're doing this on-premises uh, and they're you know, disrupting their, you know, their competitors in, in, the, in the meantime. What do you make of some of the announcements that we've heard this week? Obviously VMware making a big deal with, with what's going on with AWS. We're seeing AWS capitulate, David Floyer, you made the call, they've got to have an on-prem strategy. Many said, no, that'll never happen. Mm. AWS just wants to sweep the floor. So that's sort of a tip to the hybrid cap. 
what are your thoughts on, on, on what's going on there and how does HP sort of participate in those trends? Yeah, I'd say it's, um, you know, instead of uh, battle and capitulate, right, we've been very laser focused on the customers and helping them along their way on the journey, right? So you see a lot of, um, a lot of acquisitions we've done around services, right, advisory CTP, service. CTP is a yeah. perfect example, right? And so CTP has a, you know, a whole cadre of experts who understand Azure, who understand uh, uh, ECS and all the services and functions that go along with them, and we're able to help people right size, right place, you know, whatever you want to call it, um, within their infrastructure, because we know that you know, we've been in business for 75 plus years and have a very loyal customer base, and we're going to help them you know, along their maturity curve, and certainly not everyone's on the same <laughs> in, on the same path in the same race, right? But um, it's, it's been pretty successful so far. You guys tend to connect the dots between your HPE Discover US in Las Vegas and uh, HPE Discover in December. So June to December, you're on these sort of six month cycles, mm. US focus, Europe focus. I think uh, December's in Madrid again, yep. second year in Madrid. Uh, US is always Vegas, you know, like most of these conferences. What's the cadence you, that you're on? Um, what was the vibe like at, at Discover? What should we expect for leading up to Q4 and you know, calendar Q4 and in, in Madrid? Yeah, so I'd say that um, Discover was, was a big success in Vegas. Uh, always fun to spend time here. <laughs> uh, and uh, in Madrid, you'll see a focus uh, definitely around the value parts of, the, of our business, right? So we've been growing in like automation. We talked about hybrid IT, certainly the core around storage. We're really, really focused and in, in very heavily invested in not just storage, but intelligent data management, right? So we really feel that our offerings, especially doubling down and offering more services around InfoSight uh, and some of those predictive and cloud-ready uh, user stories for our customers is something that you know, def definitely differentiates ourselves in the, in the market. So that's been very, um, you, you'll, we'll be very focused on, on the data plane, the data layer, and helping customers transform in that area. Great, awesome. Okay, so let's talk some tenor sax. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's not New Orleans, right? <laughs> when we were down in New Orleans, we were, we were at VMON, I think you had your sax with you, you right. jumped in, you were- Played with the Soul Rebels. Playing with the Soul Rebels, you're awesome. Hey, Leonard, a big, big jazz man, love it. I'm a huge TOP fan. So, what's new in that world? You still still active, still playing? Yeah, we, the band's still playing. Uh, shout out to my buddies in Jalopy. Uh, I'm sitting in with some friends at a dead cover band coming up in a couple weeks, so <laughs> should be fun. We're going to reenact the uh, Grateful Dead and Bar Branford Marsalis. So. That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. it should be fun. We've been getting a big dose of hip hop this week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the new thing is that you know, in hip hop, uh, it's getting back to its you know, original roots. So a lot of folks in the jazz world collaborating with the folks in the hip hop world, right? So not very commercial, definitely underground, but pretty cool. I love it. Yeah. Well, you know, that's right, Leonard, you'd be pointing out, Miles Davis was one of the first to make that transformation, you know? Yeah. Good call, so. Yeah, what do you say, it's, uh, I'm going to get the numbers wrong, but it's about, you know, 5% five, 5 technique and 95% and, and attitude, right? Yeah. yeah, well, that's right. And of course, jazz is like hip hop, man. There's a lot of guys doing their own yeah, thing, and absolutely. somehow it all comes together. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. All right, Patrick, hey, great to see you, man. Yeah, great Thanks to see you guys. Much, Thank you, David. All right, coming yeah, to good to see you guys. It's a pleasure, go Sox. Oh, let's start, we got time for some talks, talks? Yeah, all right. All right. What do you think? Oh. I mean, it's getting a little Bucky Dan is trending in my Twitter, yeah. right? That's, uh, <laughs> that's my problem. So hopefully we can, uh, I don't, I, like we said the other night, we, I definitely don't want to be limping into the playoffs, right? And I'm still not a fan of this one, one team wild card playoff, but I think we'll be all right. All right I hope I we we'll go deep. Right. We got, we, we it's a, uh, it's a great time to yeah. be a Boston fan. Celtics. Football starting. Really jammed up Celtics for Celtics, are coming yeah. in November, so awesome. Great to see you, man. Thanks yeah, awesome, thanks for having me. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. You're watching theCUBE live, day three at VMworld 2018. We'll be right back.